Hi, welcome back to Bio 6612. So today we're going to talk about doing inference with uh, maximum likelihood estimators. In particular, we're going to talk about the likelihood ratio, the score, and the Wald tests. So asymptotic theory allows for inference about data and parameters in the form of confidence intervals and hypothesis tests. Um, and when we talk about hypothesis tests, I'm talking about things like testing the significance of the betas in a regression framework. I'm also talking about how comparing how well two different but similar models fit the data. In the second context, for DLMs, these two models should have the same probability distribution and link function, but one model can have more covariates than the other. And common tests for doing these things, um, which we're going to talk about today, are the likelihood ratio test, the Wald test, and the score test. And all three of these tests are derived from the asymptotic distributions that I mentioned in the previous lecture. So the likelihood ratio test is what I'm going to talk about first, and this, or the LRT. And the LRT statistic, which I'll call TLR, um, is constructed from a ratio of likelihood functions. In, in particular, the LRT is the ratio of the likelihood at the hypothesized parameter values to the likelihood of the data at the maximum likelihood estimator. So theta of H0 is what I'm, call, I'm calling the value of theta under the null hypothesis. Um, and then theta MLE is what I'm calling the value of theta at the MLE. So for the likelihood ratio test statistic, you just take a ratio of this value of theta at the null hypothesis divided by the um, likelihood of theta at the MLE. And you take the log of that and multiply it by negative two. And that's the test statistic. And this test statistic has a chi-square distribution, asymptotic chi-square distribution um, with degrees of freedom based on the number of parameters theta um, that you're estimating. So often, for example, the value that you would be testing if you're in a regression framework would be uh, beta equals zero for the null hypothesis and beta is the MLE um, for that denominator likelihood. So you can also use a likelihood ratio test to compare goodness of fit between two nested models. So when I say nested model, I mean um, the two models are the same, except one model has just fewer covariates than the other model, but they have otherwise the same covariates. One model has a subset of covariates from, of the other model. Uh, and in this framework, you compare the full model, which is the model with the larger number of covariates, to the reduced model, the model with fewer number of covariates. And if you're familiar with F-tests from linear regression framework uh, or ANOVA, um, I did not mean to highlight that, oh well. These are similar to the multiple partial F tests. And in the case of the goodness of fit likelihood ratio test, uh, the way you calculate your degrees of freedom is just the difference in the number of parameters in the full model and the reduced model. And then the test statistic is then the same. As an aside, if you want to compare non-nested models, um, you can use AIC or another information criterion, which we'll get to um, later in the semester. The Wald test it was a different test, which the Wald test statistic we denote Z squared, and this is also based on the, ma the maximum likelihood estimate. This is a very easy test statistic to calculate, and because of that, it's the p-value that's often reported in many parameter estimate tables that's built into software, like R and SAS. Um, it also has a chi-squared distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the number of parameters being estimated. And there's a couple pieces of notation here that I'm going to highlight because in the next slide when I show you how to calculate the Wald test statistic, these will come up. Uh, theta hat MLE is the parameter estimate at the MLE. Again, theta H0 is the 
parameter estimate under the null hypothesis. And then the information of theta hat MLE is the expected information evaluated at the value of the MLE. So then the wall test statistic um, is calculated as follows. So there's a multivariate version. And when I say multivariate, what I mean is that's the version that you would calculate if your theta is a vector and not a scalar. And then you take theta minus um, theta, sorry, the theta at the MLE minus the null hypothesis value of theta transpose times the information uh, times the theta at the MLE minus theta. Um, but the univariate version, or when theta is a scalar, might look really familiar because this is similar to a z-score. And here you just do the theta at the, and, and this, is, this is just the same. The univariate version, which you get when theta is a scalar, is down here. And that's the theta estimate of the MLE minus the null hypothesis value for theta squared divided by the variance, um, where variance is calculated as 1 over the information. And this has a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom because there's only one parameter that's being estimated. And equivalent to the chi-squared version, um, you can take the square root of this test statistic and um, that has a normal distribution. So these, these two sort of statements of the wall test are equivalent and they both can be useful. And finally, we have the score test. So the, the score test statistic, which I'm calling TS, is based on the value of the score function U of theta under the null hypothesis. Um, And so you may recall from previous lectures that the variance of the score function is equal to the expected information. Here, I, as a refresher, I have the score written for function written here, which is just the first derivative with respect to theta of the log likelihood. And so if you have null hypothesis theta equals theta h naught, then your test statistic for the score test is given by uh, this score function at, evaluated at the null hypothesis squared divided by the variance of the score statistic divided by the variance of the score function evaluated at the null hypothesis. And this also has a chi-squared distribution with degrees of freedom based on the number of parameters being estimated. So all of these three tests have distributions that are asymptotically chi-squared. Um, and when the null hypothesis is true, these tests are actually equivalent as sample size goes to infinity. But they differ when in small samples or when H0 is false. And in practice, the score tests give the best type 1 error rates for small sample sizes and the likelihood ratio tests tend to have the greatest power. So I'm going to go through, we've been using the Bernoulli, we've been using the Bernoulli distribution a lot, and I'm going to use it again um, to go through an example of each of these tests. So as a reminder, um, if we have NIID, binary variables um, y1 through yn that follow a Bernoulli distribution with probability yi equals 1 of pi, then the log likelihood of this sample of n y values is given by um, this equation here. We've calculated this before. And here, yeah, pi is the probability that any of these variables is equal to 1. And the MLE estimate um, for pi or pi hat is given by the sum of the yi's divided by n or y bar. That's the MLE estimate for pi. So in this framework, we want to test the null hypothesis that pi equals pi zero. 
where pi zero is just some scalar value. And of course, normally um, pi zero would be like an actual number um, in practice when you're testing this. So we want to uh, so we want to test the null hypothesis that pi equals pi zero, where pi zero is some scalar value versus the alternative hypothesis that pi is not equal to that number pi zero. And you can do this using any three of these tests that we just started discussing. First, I'll go through the example for the likelihood ratio test. So in the likelihood ratio test, you need to have a ratio of two likelihoods and the test statistic is given by TLR, the likelihood ratio test, uh, equals negative two times log of the likelihood under theta H naught divided by the likelihood under theta MLE. So, In that case, we just need to take a ratio of these two likelihoods I have written out here. So I've plugged in, um, for the top row, I've plugged in theta h naught, which in our case is pi zero, um, to that log likelihood. And for the bottom, I've plugged in theta mle, which is pi hat um, for our log likelihood. So taking that ratio, what you get is test statistic for the log likelihood ratio test is negative two times log pi zero from sum y i plus log one minus pi zero times n minus some y i. And then minus this second set of things here, which is log pi hat some y i minus log one minus pi hat times n minus some y i. Okay. And we can simplify that a little bit. And what we end up with is negative 2 times log of pi 0 over pi hat times some y i. plus log of 1 minus pi 0 over 1 minus pi hat times n minus some y i. OK. So that test statistic we just calculated is going to follow a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom, one coming from the fact that there's just one parameter, which is pi hat that we had to estimate. And for the wall test, we use the Fisher information evaluated at the MLE. So the MLE is given by pi hat, which is equal to y bar. And we calculated in one of the previous lectures that the Fisher information of the Bernoulli distribution is n divided by pi hat times 1 minus pi hat, which increases as n increases. Um, and so, so then the wall test statistic is just the theta hat MLE, which is pi hat in this example, minus 
the theta under h naught, which is pi zero squared, divided by the inverse of the information, which is theta hat one minus theta hat over n. And this also has a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom. So finally, we have a quick example of the score test. And the score test uses score and information functions evaluated at the null hypothesis. So luckily, I can just pick those out from the previous slides we had. Um, the information of we had the information of pi is equal to n over pi times 1 minus pi and we had the score of pi is given by sum of yi over pi 0 minus n minus the sum of yi over 1 minus pi 0. Squared. This is actually a typo here. This should be squared. But then you can plug in this value um, from above of the information and the score to get that value of the test statistic, which also has a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom. Okay, we just talked a little bit about hypothesis testing, and now I'm gonna talk about confidence interval construction. So we can construct confidence intervals for the null hypothesis theta equals some scalar value theta star by inverting each of the three test statistics that I just showed you. Um, and this is by far the easiest to do for the walled statistic. And for that reason, the walled statistic um, confidence based confidence intervals are often found in statistical software. Um, however, and the confidence intervals based on the score and the likelihood ratio tests often require iterative solutions. However, the likelihood ratio uh, based confidence interval, which is also called the profile likelihood based confidence interval, is more accurate than the walled for small to moderate, moderate sample sizes. So for that reason, that is being included more and more in um, statistical software packages. But first, uh, constructing confidence interval in, but first, constructing confidence intervals using the walled statistic.
So using the world statistics, say your alpha, you choose some alpha value for type one error rate. Um, then the confidence interval for that selected alpha rate for the null hypothesis theta equals theta star is given by this equation here, where you take theta hat as the MLE minus the the score value at that chosen alpha times the standard error estimate um, of the MLE. And when and when alpha is equal to 0 0.05, you see the familiar z-score number 1.96 goes in there. So to construct confidence intervals using the likelihood ratio test, the um, it's a little bit harder because instead of having a nice closed form solution like you saw in the previous slide, so to construct the confidence interval using the likelihood ratio test statistic, you have to solve that using a back and forth iterative equation that gets the solution that finds the values of theta star such that this equation here is satisfied where the ratio of the likelihood of um, under the maximum likelihood estimator theta hat over theta star is less than the chi squared value at your chosen alpha level, where that chi-squared value is the one minus alpha quantile from a chi-squared distribution with one degree of freedom. And also that should be 0.05, not 0.005. OK, thanks. And that's it for today. We're going to go through some more specific examples in lab next week.